and all of this stuff. It's the same crowd. Peter Thiel runs Palantir, that you harvest your data for intelligence agencies. Every intelligence agency in the US uses it, and it profiles people, and they can label you as subversive. And Palantir is the outgrowth of total information awareness that I mentioned earlier. Palantir was literally created to replace that. They did it Andrew, on purpose. Palmer Lucky's yeah. company, Andrew, too. Is Very insane. The it's involved with the border stuff, too. Well, the they have this huge surveillance, with... autonomous dragnet on the border, Anduril set up. It's obviously not stopping people from coming in. Is it to stop people from coming out? Maybe. But I, I just finished you know, writing it a piece. Both ways. I just finished writing a piece about uh, the the basically the peer to peer revolution uh, in the late '90s with Napster, uh, with Nutella, with E Donkey 2000, which was Jed McCaleb, the Mt. Gox Ripple Stellar guy. Um, and you look at actually there was a huge amount of involvement of intelligence agencies in the founding of Napster. Uh, of, of BitTorrent, and you see that the ISP usage, the percentage goes from being like well under, you know, 10% of, uh, you know, the internet usage being peer-to-peer -peer networks to being over 60% by the time BitTorrent had really done its thing. Uh, and you cannot really have a surveillance state without being able basically to obfuscate data sending, packet sending from your devices to these centralized servers where they're doing this work. So you actually even look at the basically, you know, Napster was arguably a psyop to get us all to connect our computers and make the internet be this huge network of peer-to-peer -peer stuff with huge amounts of data packet sending to set us up right before 9-11, right before the Patriot Act, right before, you know, all the things that were then later exposed basically in Vault 7. And you can kind of see this trend of, you know, I mean, it's literally Peter Thiel and, and then these, these same people uh, that, were, that were infiltrating, you know, the peer-to-peer -peer networks that basically allowed for the obfuscation of the data surveillance market that we now have. Uh, yeah, it, it's very on stupid. that note, the big trend with data after 9-11, like intelligence agencies, you know, the, uh, the narrative, right, was like failure of imagination and intelligence failure about why 9-11 happened, right? And so the solution that the intelligence agencies had ready made to this excuse uh, was that all, all the data of the national security community needs to be warehoused in one central spot and shared. Yeah, so and you had shared with me the letter from Larry Page, who wrote a New York Times op-ed like two months after 9-11. No, Larry Ellison. Sorry, Larry Ellison of Oracle, mm -hmm. which was a CIA project as CIA well, front. Project Oracle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he had come out and been like, you know, the way to avoid 9-11 the next time is to, yeah, exactly what you just said. Sorry, just wanted to. They want that. everyone's data. I mean, data has been a huge part of this play for a really long time. And now we're giving away more of our data than ever and more intimate parts of our data. And now they have tools that use that data that can do awful things if we let them. And it doesn't mean we have to live without AI or any of this stuff, like if you want to use it, okay, but we have to divest from big tech AI because they are trying to use AI to turn us into a like un giant underclass of subhumans who, I mean, this Kissinger exactly. Schmidt book is so crazy and I encourage everyone to read it because they literally lay out that it's going to create neo-feudalism. They don't use that term but basically they say there will be two classes of people. There will be the people that program and maintain and set the objective functions of AI. And then there will be the people that AI acts upon who lose the ability to understand what AI is doing to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's neo-feudalism, but like for, obviously it's big tech and everyone else is essentially what that is. And the people who set the objective function, I'm sure will be like existing oligarchs and existing power elites. Yeah. Well, once that system's in place, you're not going to break and get into the, the top tier. Like that's over, you know, and you'll, the whole, what they talk about is co you'll be cognitively diminished. AI will act on you, will ma manipulate you in ways you don't understand. And you won't be able to tell what's real and what's not. And that AI uh, well, first of all, AI hallucinates, like that's the term. It like will produce output that isn't even real and doesn't exist. And they argue in this book that AI will push us into this era of unseen realities. 
and that only AI can see. And we should trust that those are real because AI is super smart. Yeah. And, and, and so they, AI I mean, this is like matrix AI. level shit to an insane degree. It really truly is. So I had a good conversation oh. with Alex Fetsky last month and like the whole narrative around AI right now, particularly why they're trying to create these regulatory moats is this concept of AGI, artificial general intelligence. It's a can, It's yeah, it's a complete red herring to just yeah. funnel people into mm -hmm. these closed source mm -hmm. AI systems where you can control the propaganda. A bit of a white pill here. It's yeah. good to see yeah, open source. Totally. Open source. It, it, AI it is a bit of a white pill. Yeah. <laughs> there is this. Well, here's the white pill. Open source AI models are reaching parity with open AIs and uh, mid journeys of the world, which is good. Yeah, I mean, right, if so you are against the world coin model and you're using open AI and like pumping Altman's bags and making him more powerful, like, please stop, dude. I will. I'm, I'm <laughs> just, using it. I've been experimenting with it just to like see how it works. But yeah, that's what our strategy in 2024, we're transitioning all to open source models. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, it, there's a reason they've been so successful. It's because they've made us so dependent on specifically big tech tech. And mm -hmm. it's very hard to drop that like that, especially when you have like mm -hmm. businesses to consider that are like so entrenched with that a lot of the time. But if you are a company that wants to stand for freedom and specifically financial freedom, you must move away. You must have a plan to move away because I mean, what's happening, I mean, take Microsoft as an example, which basically is open AI at this point. Um, they've basically said, okay, you have a windows system. Your data on there is tied to your Microsoft account. If you lose access to your Microsoft account or we block you from your Microsoft account, you lose all of your data yeah, on your own good. computer. And at the same time, you have no right to say no to them uploading all of the data, all of your data on your computer to feed their AI, which presumably will include open AI.